Good morning, body of Christ. How's everybody doing? Oh, it is beautiful out here this morning. Gorgeous and beautiful. Speak Virginia. Yes, indeed. You know, um, there was a radio station called WRAP on the AM back in the day, and they had the king of radio was Daddy Jack Holmes. And Daddy Jack say, Happy birthday to you. I'm saying, Happy New Year to you. Yes, Daddy Jack. It's just a good thing when we gather together to worship the Lord. Amen. Even though uh, this pandemic has us, a lot of us at home or in different other places, we're still together by spirit. We are the actual body of Christ. And this morning we want to look at uh, 1 John, second chapter. The scripture is going to be 1 John, second chapter, starting at the 24th verse. It's about remaining with God. It's talking to God's children. And this is what it says. What you have heard from the beginning must remain in you. If what you have heard from the beginning remains in you, then you will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he himself made to us, eternal life. I have written these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. The anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you don't need anyone to teach you. Instead, his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie. Just as he has taught you, remain in him. So now, little children, remain in him so that when he appears, we may have boldness and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know this as well. Everyone who does what is right has been born of him. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God. God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. Our wise and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord. Just want to thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up. Thank you for extraordinary health this morning, Lord, that allowed us to get out of the bed and to get in our cars and make our way here. Father, we thank you because we know there are so many people. The hospitals are packed again from the virus. And Lord, we ask that you would bring some healing to them and bring some joy to those families through your holy word. So, Lord, as we open up your holy word this morning and pass the brothers the word of God, speak to our hearts this morning, Lord. Shine the light of your Holy Spirit that's dwelling in us. May it shine brighter today. We hear your word. We thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, blessed your holy name. You're worthy to be praised. Father, I ask that you bless the service. Bless all those that are coming. Bless all those that are at home listening from their peace and sanctity of their home. And Lord, bless the praise team as it sings. Glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Amen. Is filled with swift transition. Not a earth can move and stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold you God's unchanging hand. 
Hold to his hand God's unchanging hand Hold to his hand God's unchanging hand Build your hopes on things eternal Hold to God's unchanging hand Trust in him who will not leave you Whatsoever you may bring If by earthly friends forsaken Still more closely to him cling Oh, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. When your journey is completed And to God you have been true Fair and right the home in glory Your enraptured soul will view God's unchanging hand Hold to his hand God's unchanging hand Build your hopes on things eternal Hold to God's unchanging hand God's unchanging hand Hold to his hand God's unchanging hand Build your hopes on things eternal Hold to God's unchanging hand I am bound Zion, way out on a hill. I'm found for Mount Zion, way out on a hill. I am found for Mount Zion, way out on a hill. And if anybody makes it, surely I will. I am bound for Mount Zion, way out on a hill. I am bound for Mount Zion, way out on a hill. I am bound for Mount Zion, way out on a hill. And if anybody makes it, Surely I will Glory, glory Hallelujah Since I lay my burdens down Glory, glory Hallelujah Since I So much better 
since I lay my burdens down, I feel better, so much better since I laid my burdens down. Friends don't treat me like that. Since I laid my burden down Friends don't treat me like they used to Since I laid my burden down Where I come from, this is how we used to do it Glory, glory Hallelujah, oh, since I laid my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down, and if no musician showed up, this was it. Glory, glory, yeah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome uh, to everyone to Body of Christ Community Church. Um, today, uh, I want to continue in a message that I started last week, uh, talking about judging, but it's good to see all of you who are here in the building. Uh, for those of you who are uh, catching us on live stream, um, that was a recording of the praise team. I guess you probably wouldn't have known it if I hadn't told you, but uh, our musician isn't here this morning, so thank God for technology where we can go into the archives and pull something up, amen? Amen. And so, it's, uh, as I've said over the last couple of weeks, I, um, I'm going over a message or revisiting, I won't say going over, revisiting a message I preached some 45 years ago. Uh, my initial message when I first started preaching, and I entitled that message, Here Comes the Judge. <laughs> Last week, we looked at um, some components of judging, but today I want to uh, have a slight twist on that title, and it will be, Here Comes the Judge, Just Mental, or judgmental, mm. just mental, or just now. Now you, your mind can go wherever you want your mind to go when I say just mental. But allow me to say to you, I am not talking about people who have mental deficiencies or mental illnesses, because there are times when we can be mental. Mm -hmm. We get in our feelings when we judge people. And when we get in our feelings, when we judge people, the potential is that we're just acting off of emotion. And the people or the persons that we may be judging may say, you're just crazy. <laughs> you're just mental. And no one wants to be called crazy. No one wants to be known as someone who is mental. However, there's another way that we can look at just mental. And if you see it on the screen, you see that I have just in quotation marks. I don't want your mind to go to someone who is crazy. What about justice? Okay. What about what is right versus that which is judgmental? Because there are those times when we are judging things, when we are judging situations, when we are judging people even, and it is just. It is right. As I mentioned last week, if Sheila were to come to the elders of the church, and that was a big if, and I'm going to state that again today, it's a big if, if she comes to the elders and says, Stephan is cheating on me. If it is true, and they say, well, Stephen, you need to step down from being pastor because you are sinning. That is just. 
That is correct. That is righteous. So my question for us today is when we judge, is it just mental or is it judgmental? Let's pray and let's look into the word of God. Father, we thank you again for your many blessings, for your grace towards us. Thank you, O oh God, for being God. And we come before you, Lord, because we know that you have made us and we have not made ourselves. We are the sheep of your pastures. So, Lord, we pray that you would speak to our hearts today from your word. Give us to know uh, where we come short and how we should improve, how we should be better, how we should live righteously, even when it comes to evaluating people, situations, and also, Lord, judging according to your word. Speak to us, Lord, we pray. Speak through me that your people would be uh, known, would know how to use your word aright. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are using as a foundational scripture or scriptures two passages uh, in the Gospels where Jesus speaks about judging. And as we mentioned last week, many people misquote these passages. They misapply these passages. They use them to try to get you off of their backs, so to speak. So um, turn with me to Luke. I was going to look at Mark, but I, do, I, I want to look at Luke initially. Turn with me to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Verse 37 is what we'll use for a foundation for today. We mentioned these briefly last week and we'll go a little bit more in depth today. Luke chapter 6, this is Jesus speaking during what's commonly called the Sermon on the Mount because he sat on a mount and he gave this sermon. Verse 36 of Luke, I'm sorry, verse 37 of Luke 6. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. These are the words of Jesus Christ speaking to those that were there and which we can use today uh, for ourselves in application so that we don't judge. Now, just a brief review from last week. Last week, we mentioned about the Greek word judge which is a Greek word, krino. Not too often that I will pronounce Greek words <laughs> because I don't pronounce them too well, but that one is too easy not to, you know, to, to mess up. Uh, my, one of my uh, college professors is in the room and he's a Greek scholar. He can pronounce all these things with no problem, but I know my limit. So I, I, I'm judging myself not to go too far. And so last week we mentioned that judge is found in both the verb and the Greek form. It basically means to pronounce judgment to hear or to be judged of a, in a legal case. Of course, as a noun, it's an individual, a public official. When we talk about judging, it's the process of reaching a decision or drawing conclusions. So when people say you are being judgmental, many times they're saying that you are drawing a conclusion. Now, to be judged, another derivative of this word crino, it means to be or become brought to account for one's actions and sentenced accordingly. And this is often done in a courthouse setting before a judge. And when people say you are being judgmental, many times they're saying you have set yourself up to be the judge and now you are passing sentence. Judgment, another form of this Greek word that we find throughout scripture is the act of judging or assessing a person, situation, or event, especially one that results in a moral or legal determination. Many times people feel that you can't judge them when it comes to their morals. If I choose to say this, I choose to be this way, I choose to do this, they say you have no right to make an assessment 
of what they say and or doing. doing. And so we're going to look at this and we want to deal with throughout this series about seven aspects I want to take a look at uh, uh, when it comes to judging over the next few weeks. And the one that we're going to look at today is not to be judgmental. However, we are not to be judgmental, but at the same time, we're supposed to use scriptures correctly and to judge wisely. Uh, hopefully, over the next few weeks, we'll, we'll know how to avoid the pitfall of being hypocritical. Uh-oh. <laughs> Putting on this false face. Being pretentious. Though we have to judge, we, we cannot be hypocritical. We cannot be intolerant of someone else's sin while at the same time, watch this now, at the same time we are involved in the same sin. Even the sin of being judgmental. <laughs> okay. We are going to be looking at to not to sin by assuming God's position because God is the judge of people. We can't take his position. Wow. Y'all forgive me, but my family just walked in from Maryland. <laughs> hey, y'all. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, um, man, good to see you. Um, now, now, now I'm going to be judging my wife. <laughs> Say <laughs> so you didn't know either. Oh, well, praise the Lord. So forgive me, baby, for being judgmental. I judged you incorrectly. We should judge others uh, while we are being constructive, while we are being humble, and while we are being gentle. We're going to see all of this over the next few weeks. And then we'll look at how to live in harmony. The final one is how to live in harmony. Uh, in accordance to God's commands. Because there are some people who say, well, you can be judgmental and you should be judgmental and you should condemn folk, but we shouldn't condemn folk if it's going to lead to disharmony in the body. If one is sinning, then that one sin is what's causing disunity and disharmony in the body. And we've got to deal with that. But we also must be humble while we're doing it. So, we're, like I said, we're going to talk about judgmental or judgmentalism today. There are times when, when, when people may feel that she or he is being judged, they're being condemned, they're being made to feel guilty, and many times that's based upon that individual's uh, estimation that they should not be made to feel guilty. If Sheila tells me, Stephan, you are being too hard on those boys, and I tell her, don't judge me. <laughs> You're being judgmental. I mean, and I just screamed at them. And I've been screaming at them for the last three days. I'm telling her she's being judgmental because she's telling me about myself. Okay. Most folk don't want to be told about themselves. I guess that's a judgmental statement when I say most people don't want to be told about themselves, right? <laughs> I don't want to be told about myself. Let, 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 let me bring this home. Series of questions for you. When, when, when someone makes an evaluation based upon observation and states some, some conclusion that's derived from those observations, does that make the evaluator judgmental? If you look at me and you see that I have on a burgundy suit with a vest, a blue shirt, a dark blue tie, and I have this gray pocket square on, and you say, gray pocket square? Then you made an observation, am I not right? You made a, an evaluation, the blue and the dark blue and the, and the burgundy may go good, but where does the gray come in? Are you being judgmental? If you were to ask me, without condemning me, I would tell you that the reason why I have the gray pocket square on 
because the gray, the gray pocket square also has some blue in it. You might not be able to see that from where you're sitting, <laughs> but it's got some blue in it. And then if you were to look at my wife's dress, because so many of y'all know that Sheila and I, we, we, we tend to be color coordinated, right? And so she's got on navy blue, and then she's got on burgundy or red in her dress, and there's some gray. See, there's a reason why I'm doing it. Uh, uh, is this just mental? Mental. <laughs> or is it judgmental? Can, 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 can being judgmental, can that be measured? Am I responsible for how another person is supposed to feel or how another person actually feels? And that's a deep question, y'all. When I tell you about yourself or I'm being told about myself, am I res are you responsible for my feelings? Now, we've got a licensed counselor in the room, and if you want to answer to that question, she can answer that later on. That's just a question I, I, I have. Is there a difference between one's opinion <laughs> and judgment? Is the, is the, accusation, of, uh, the accusation of me being judgmental is that being judgmental. If I accuse you of being judgmental of me, am I not being judgmental of you for accusing me of being judgmental? The answer is yes. Oh, well, somebody said. <laughs> so that, 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 that boils down to what really is judgmental? Well, uh, I, since I was going to be talking about being judgmental, I, th I thought it was wise to uh, look up the definition of judgmental. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary said, gives two definitions for judgmental. Uh, of relating to or involving judgment. And the second definition, I think, is the one that most people uh, tend to find themselves. Characterized by a tendency to judge harshly. Didn't say not to judge, but that the, that the judgment is harsh. Dictionary.com offers these definitions. Involving the use or exercise of judgment. Again, we can understand having to evaluate. But look at this second uh, definition. Tending to make quick and excessively critical judgment. Especially moral ones. One who is judgmental often will look at something, hear something, come to a conclusion very quickly. And then not only is there a critique involved, it, it involves being what? Overly critical. The Cambridge Dictionary just comes up with a very simple definition. Disapproving. Judgmentalism to them is disapproving. Okay. CollinsDictionary.com was interesting. They didn't, this was kind of an interesting definition to me, and I'm going to judge their definition because it doesn't seem like a definition to me. It just seems like a statement. Okay. Am I being judgmental when I say that? <laughs> you know, I just... This is what their definition was. If you say that someone is judgmental, you are critical of them because they form opinions of people and situations very quickly when it will be better for them to wait until they know more about the person or the situation. Now, that seems like a very long definition, seems like a statement, but did you catch what was going on here? Being quick, being excessively critical, coming to a conclusion when you ought to just sit back and Observe and wait. And, 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 and can I say this about God while I'm thinking about it? Because I'll forget it later on. Aren't you glad that God went in his judgment? He's long-suffering towards us. He is patient. Doesn't mean judgment isn't coming. But God gives us a chance to correct things. And if we don't correct things, then the judgment may result in punishment. Excuse me, the judgment will result in punishment if we don't get things right. However, all judgment does not necessarily have to end in judgment, I mean in punishment. Judgment can also end in reward. And for the believer, we're going to be judged one day. Not at the great white throne judgment. 
But at the Bema seat, our works will be judged. Paul tells us that when they're judged, those that are good, they'll go through that fire. And if they're wood, hable, uh, wood uh, hay and stubble, what's going to happen? They're going to burn up. But if they're gold and silver and precious stones, they're going to pass the test. So judgment is not always good. I'm mean, always bad. It can be good. <laughs> judgment can result in reward. How many, how many of you have said to your children or your grandchildren, if you get all A's and B's on your report card, I got something for you. Uh, my grandkids are so smart, I ain't, I'm smart enough not to make that statement to them. I'd be a broke somebody. <laughs> See, that's me using my mental part here. There are some, some, some synonyms for um, being judgmental. Critical, fault-finding, censorous, condemnatory, disapproving, disparaging, depreciating, negative, overcritical, hypercritical, and scathing. Some people act that way. As I was preparing for this sermon, I, I, I did some, some research online. And I ran across this article, so, so, so bear with me because we're going to take a look at two articles. We're going to get to the scripture, but I want to show you where the world is with this. I ran across two articles. One was entitled, 20 Signs You're an Overly Critical, I mean, Overly Judgmental Person. This statement from that paragraph, and I believe this was the opening paragraph from that magazine, says, We often try. that is bad. Seldom do we see, do we stop and think whether, or however, whether we should really be exhibiting judgment at all. We often in our daily lives um, try to exhibit judgment that is good and avoid judgment that is bad. Seldom do we stop and think, however, whether we should really be exhibiting judgment at all. The fact is, for some people, the issuing of judgment crosses the line from a, ne a necessity of life to a recreational sport. What a statement. When that happens, you're no longer merely issuing helpful or unhelpful opinions. You've become an overly judgmental person and one who enjoys being around, and no one enjoys being around in overly judgmental person. Thank you, sir. A recreational sport. Recreational sport. That's, that's, that's assuming that there are some people who just want to be judgmental all the time. Doesn't that sound kind of judgmental? <laughs> Now, I, I, I'm guessing you might be wondering what those 20 signs of being judgmental are. And may I just no longer, I won't prolong your curiosity any longer. Here we go. Here are those 20 things that the author of this article says. How you can determine or what identifies one as being judgmental. You frequently make for uh, moral evaluations. You see others' actions as emblematic of their person. You justify your criticism as the truth. You expect perfect consistency from others. You regularly have a negative outlook. Your judgment of others typically elevates yourself. You jump to conclusions. Mm -mm. How come I, I heard a whole lot of mumbling when I read down? <laughs> Wow. You do not trust others. You struggle to tolerate ambiguity. Guilty. You engage in black or white thinking. Guilty. You focus on specific traits of others. You are perfectionist. That ain't me because I ain't perfect. You're losing friends. People don't share things with you. You feel social anxiety. 
You often tell others how to fix or improve things. Guilty. You're intolerant of other people's differences. You have low self-worth. You believe others are out to get you. They're saying those are 20 signs that someone could be overly judgmental. In an August uh, 3rd, 2021 article on lonewolf.com, they had this article that says 13 signs you are a judgmental person and how to end the habit. Okay. All right. They, their, thir- their list of 13 comprised much of what was in the list of 20. But I wanted to read three paragraphs from that article to you. This magazine says, and I think this is from England because of some of their syntax and their spelling here. So uh, when you look at judgmental there and you see the E in judgmental, near the E behind the G, don't think I don't know how to write or don't know how to spell. I, I, I use spell check very well. All right, so this may, I think this is an English version. Being a judgmental person essentially means thinking, speaking, or behaving in a manner that reflects a critical and condemnatory point of view. When we are judgmental, we are critically nitpicking and finding fault with another person, group of people, idea, or situation. In a nutshell, we are seeing through the filter of our black-white beliefs, condemning something or someone as bad, stupid, unworthy, etc., Judgmentalism also extends to ourselves, leading to problems such as low self-worth, depression, and anxiety. Next paragraph. Being judgmental isn't all bad. When our inner judge, and will you notice how judge is spelled there? With a capital J. When our inner judge is balanced, we are able to make clear decisions and avoid potentially dangerous situations. Being critical also helps us to be creative, innovative, and insightful about other people's problems. Think of the therapist who must judge his or her patient to help them. I pointed your attention to that inner judge because as soon as I saw that word judge there when I was reading that article and I saw judge capitalized, I became judgmental. Because my inner judge I'm, again, I jumped to a quick conclusion because I don't know what the intent of this author was. I, this does not appear to be a Christian uh, publication. And so when the judge there, it made me think about my inner God. Am I God? Am, am I superior? I, I was going to initially change that to a lowercase j, but then that would not have been fair. But our inner judge. Can we trust ourselves when we are left to ourselves without having the God of creation, his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit living inside of us and guiding us? Can we trust ourselves? Remember, in our last series, we talked about wisdom, the wisdom of the world, your personal wisdom versus godly wisdom. wisdom. This third paragraph from that article 13 signs you're a judgmental person and how to end the habit reads, but there's a big difference between making judgments and being judgmental. Making judgments comes from a balanced and neutral mind. And we could argue that point, but I understand where they're going with this, I think. On the other hand, judgmentalism comes from an imbalanced and reactive mind that is seeking to protect itself from being hurt by others. We could therefore say that judgmentalism is actually a defense mechanism. Now, this is Stephen speaking, close quote. We could actually say that what you say about judgmentalism is actually judgmentalism. Can't we? Isn't it that people's thoughts, people's minds, it's, it's subjective to that individual, to that individual's upbringing. And so if I'm going to talk to someone and I have to catch myself often as a pastor, as, as a pastor that's counseling, I can't bring my life experiences to everybody else's life experience. 
I can bring and should bring the word of God to their life experience. But I can't interject my life experience into their life experience if my life experience is not in alignment with the word of God. As humans, we do judge daily. <laughs> Quite honestly, we should judge daily. Because judging helps us to make choices, especially right choices, righteous choices, holy and God-honoring choices. But, but what we need to understand is this. That we are to judge with what? Righteous judgment. That's what Jesus says in John 7, 24. So what is righteous judgment for the believer? What is, what, what is righteous judgment for the follower of Christ? Righteous judgment for us, I've already said it, is based upon God's word. We need to evaluate. We need to critique. We need to observe. We need to decide. We must determine. But it has to be apart from our preferences. Notice what I just said, our preferences. Still, it has to be in accordance with God's word. I have certain preferences. <sighs> Sheila, no, I was going to ask Sheila what one of my preferences. <laughs> one of the preferences is that I don't like watching HGTV. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't judge Sheila because she likes watching HGTV. You know what I do? I go to another room. There you go, George, you got it. I just go to another room. I will sit, I will tolerate HGT for about an hour, but then I need to see some cars running up and down the road. I, I, need, I, I, I need to see a mystery. I, I, I need to watch some animals trying to figure out what's going on. I need to see a cop running down behind somebody. Notice how I said I need. I, actually, I prefer. But I don't judge her. I don't condemn her. I don't make her feel small because of her preference. Now, we have to be careful what people call preferences nowadays. Because preferences, if one has a preference and that preference is, is, is sinful, then I need to deal with the sin that one is preferring. I'm not going to condemn the person. Their sins have already condemned them. Their words, their actions have already condemned them. But I'm going to warn them. If you continue along this path, this will be your final disposition. How do you know, Stephen? Because the Bible says so. So what should we do about if we have judgmental attitudes. How does the scripture address that? Well, it goes back to what we just read in Luke chapter 6 and also in Matthew chapter 7. Again, these are the words of Jesus. I want to draw your attention first to Luke 6, 37. Jesus clearly says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Many people are going to just throw out to you, do not judge. But he says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Then he goes on to say, don't or do not condemn. Don't give judgment. Don't pass sentence against. Don't render a verdict of guilt. Don't pass sentence on. And you will not be. You don't want to be condemned. <laughs> don't do it. That's, that, that to me is not hard. Then go with me. Oh, he also says, also says, and this is what's left out when people tell you do not judge. He says, forgive, and what's going to happen? Now, a basic or simple definition of forgiveness is to release one from the debt that is perceived. That's a simple definition. And so if I'm judging Sheila because she's watching HGTV, and I want to condemn her, wouldn't the Christian thing be to forgive her for having her preference? Mm -hmm. To release her from my perceived mm -hmm. preference. From the preference that I have. And maybe I'll just relieve myself, release myself from being judgmental. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. Isn't that what Ariel said? 
Let it go. Let it go. Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to be referring to these two passages back and forth over the next few weeks. Jesus says, do not judge. There's our word crino again. So that you won't be judged. Don't judge so that you will not be judged. Luke 6.37 says, and you will not. Matthew says, so you will not. Now watch verse 2. For with the judgment you use... With the judgment you use, you will be judged. Uh-oh. Have you ever noticed that some people who are very critical, people who are very judgmental, they don't receive criticism and judgmentalism and judgment and critique real well? They, they, they can quickly point out to you every little flaw that you have. But then when you talk to them about their flaws, no, 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 that ain't the way it is. <laughs> Jesus says, for with the judgment you use, you will be judged. And notice this, look at this next clause. And with the measure, with the meter, with the amount that you use. And interestingly enough, that, that those two words you use are translated there as judged. Mm. With the measure you judge, okay. it will be measured to you. If I nitpick every time a light gets left on in the house, mm. oh, yeah. <laughs> I see, I, I see some folk pointing fingers at each other, but I, I ain't pointing them out. I ain't pointing them out. What's wrong with me just getting up and turning the light out myself? There you go. You left that light on again. How many times did I tell you? I am so sick of you and these lights. This is stuff that we say. This is stuff that we do. It's a light. And now, if the one that we are judging about the light comes back and says, I am so tired that you always leave your socks on the floor. Why is it that you just cannot, if you get the ketchup out the cabinet, why can't you put it back in the cabinet? Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You know what, in, in my old age, I, I, I used to get on my boys about this, and, and both of them are sitting in here. They would go, they would be eating something, cereal, ice cream in the den, and we didn't have a problem with them eating in the den as long as they cleaned up behind themselves. Just, and they would go into the kitchen. And they would take the bowl. Here is the sink. They would put the bowl right beside the sink. What are we talking about? Four inches. Put it in the sink. I nitpicked about that. I am critical of that. Now that they ain't home. <laughs> when I finish with a bowl, got an idea with I'm not going to say, I'm just. <laughs> For with the judgment you use, <laughs> you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? You see a, a speck of sawdust. You know it's a problem to your brother. You, you can see it, and it's amazing that you can notice it. Because you got this log in your eye. 
How can you say to your brother, verse 4, let me take the speck out of your eye and look, there's a log in your eye. Jesus, Jesus was like, how can you do that? How, not that he's judging, he's, he's like, maybe from a, from a very uh, uh, physical perspective, if you can't see, how can you see the speck in your brother's eye to get the speck out their eye and you've got something obscuring your vision? I don't like the way he cut grass. Is the grass cut? So you want it all in circles. And he goes up and down. And it's nice and even. And it's nice and level. And your circles are all over the place. At least his lines are straight. Why are you judging his straight lines? Is it? Is it? Possibly. Because his straight lines are better than your crooked circles. Jesus says, let you say, let me take the speck out of your eye. And look, there's a log in your eye. Hypocrite. I didn't call you a hypocrite. <laughs> Don't be judging me. I'm just reading the Bible. That ain't what I said. This, this is in red. <laughs> Jesus said this. <laughs> Hypocrite. First take the log out of your eye. Then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Mm. Now, did you notice what he said there? Deal with you first. But don't leave your brother with sawdust in his eye. You got to deal with you first. Deal with you. Get that log out of your eye and then you can go help somebody else. Have you ever been on an airplane and the, and, 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 and the flight attendants are giving instructions uh, for safety, what all the exits are? And they are telling you um, that in the event that the cabinet is depressurized or we're going, on, going down, from the overhead that will drop down uh, the oxygen masks. And they say, if you have someone who is young, a child, someone who is infirmed with you, what do they tell you to do with those two masks? Do you, do you recall what do they say to, to you to do? Put your mask on first and then help the child or the infirmed. Because you know, you know why? Because if you pass out, Who's going to help the person sitting beside you that you should be caring for? If I don't get that log out of my eye, mm -hmm. That's good. how can I help somebody else? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for how you love us. Father, I pray that we will not be hypocritical and just saying we are just being just when we are actually being judgmental. Help us, Lord, to distinguish between the two accurately in accordance with your word. I pray, Lord, that you would search us as we search ourselves. Help us to know uh, when we have become judgmental. Keep us, Lord, from being judgmental. Help us to call on others that will help hold us accountable when we are actually being judgmental rather than being just and loving. Lord, we don't want to be hypocrites. We want to be true. We want to be honest. We want to be transparent before you first and then to those who are around us. Give us, Lord, to be kind and compassionate when we do have to judge our brothers and sisters. Even as Paul tells us, when we do it, consider ourselves. Lord, we ask that you would do these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 God bless you. Um, for those of you who are still with us online, oh, I guess y'all going to judge your brother because this watch don't work. <laughs> but the blue matches my shirt. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you all for being with us. Um, as I mentioned, this month is also the church's anniversary. This is the 14th anniversary for the church. And also, uh, God has been so good to us. He's been, he's been gracious to us. Uh, way beyond measure. Uh, and so, thank God for, for you and thank God for him. Also, um, as I mentioned, there are several birthdays in January. Um, today is, Chris, uh, is uh, Constantina Cook's birthday. And happy birthday, Tina. Um, tomorrow will be my birthday. Horace's, amen. Thank you, thank you. Horace's birthday was, was the fourth. The Don Archeo's the eighth. Good gracious. Uh, the twins are third, right? Because theirs are right before uh, Horace's. Yeah. Ooh, you gonna be broke this month, Cynthia. Oh my good. Y'all to just have one big party and just, you know, everybody, you know, just get do like they do with the cows, get a big salt lick and let all of them have a corner to the salt. You know. My daughter our daughter in law was yesterday. Daughter in law was yesterday. yesterday our niece is today. My brother is because her sister's 13, her brother's 22nd, our nephew's 15th, and our son's 29th. Wow. Adrian Martins was this past week. Um, who else? Is somebody else in January? My other son, Charles. Charles? Oh. 85? What day? <laughs> One of them, you know, you, you just know you've been married to You've been married to him as long as I've been living. 63 years. I can remember how long y'all been married because y'all were married the same year I was born. <laughs> 29th. 29th, Tamea. Um, any anniversaries this month? No anniversaries other than the churches? Great. Well, thank y'all for, for celebrating with us. Um, for those of you who are um, watching this uh, via live stream, uh, I'm sorry. Um, but we have some food here. <laughs> um, my niece is a professional chef, and she has prepared some heavy hors d'oeuvres for us. Laree, please come let the people see you real quick. Yeah. I, think, I think the TV is on in the back, yeah, where she can hear me. I thought I had turned the volume up. But I forgot it's, it's, it's a 20 second delay, so. <laughs> She probably is not going to be happy with this. Now, that's a judgmental statement. Uh, <laughs> is she coming? Yeah. Hey, Laurie. This, this is uh, Chef Laurie, and she has her children in the back who are working along with her. And so thank you so very much for preparing for us these heavy horse divorce. <laughs> and and how you pronounce, no, that's, that's, that's Stefan's pronunciation. That's, that's, that's not the real, but hors d'oeuvres. Uh, before we go, what are you doing? So I was, uh, <clears throat> um, this, this isn't part of the script, y'all. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so, um, this is a little bit of a setup. Uh, so, um, we want to just prevent, uh, present this to you. Prevent, good, present, good. Yeah. Present this to you. Um, I was told last night that I had to say something, and I couldn't think of anything other than thank you um, for being the example to not only me and Sean, um, and to your grandkids, but to everyone. I was telling uh, my wife uh, the other day, it's funny how when me and Sean were growing up, no one really wanted to um, talk to us or anything like that because they knew pop was pop. <laughs> uh, if you know, you know. Uh, he was strict. We had different sets of rules than everybody else. But when they grew up, 
Now they are coming to me and Sean, and they are calling you for counseling sessions and for advice. That's right. And, and not just people in art, just everybody, even adults. So just thank you for being an example for us. It's a small appreciation of everything that you have done for us. Thank you. You can open it, actually, because this is going to be quite funny. Because what you just said, maybe five minutes ago, when you said, people are going to judge you. <laughs> because Joe's is not working. <laughs> so oh, this is just wow. appreciation for for your 45th year of preaching. Oh wow! And being Thank you. an example and standing with the Lord all this year. So. Love you, man. Thank you all for coming, no, man. You're welcome. I love you. Thank you. Man, that's a beautiful watch. And it. Oh man, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, you did. You did. It has the verse that the Lord used to call me to the ministry engraved on his watch. John 15, 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that you should go forth and produce fruit. Wow. <laughs> Very thoughtful. Thank y'all very much. Love y'all a whole lot.